Hi, let's learn Everdell by James A. Wilson with art by Andrew Bosley, a 1-4 to four player game, up to 6 within expansion, published by Starling Games. And note that this is a tutorial for the base game, which came as a 1-4 to four player game, which I will be going through right now. In Everdell, we are playing as a civilization that is thriving and expanding. The time has come to settle new territories and establish new cities, so each player is the leader of a group who will. The goal of the game is to have the most points at the end of the game. And most of those points will come from the 15 cards we play in front of us. Thematically, this is referred to as our city. Mechanically, we use the word tableau. For this tutorial, I will be using both words interchangeably. And now let's learn how to set up the game. We'll start by placing the game board on the table. And now let's assemble the Evertree. So we're going to take this main trunk piece, as well as these two other tree pieces, and place them together, fitting the slits together. We're going to be sure we put the larger side out, like this. So now our tree looks like this. Then we're going to take the larger of the leaf pieces, and with this extra bit facing forward, we're going to place that over the tree. So that when it's done, we can see it is resting on these branches. Finally, we're going to take this smaller piece, and again, with the slits further back, so that the brown is sitting with the brown leaves in autumn and place the Evertree in the stump area of the game board. Next, we'll place the twigs, resin, stone, and berries in their designated areas. We can see that it's the designated areas by the worker locations. For this tutorial, I will be using the pieces that come with the deluxe editions, as well as the deluxe resource holders that are sold separately. And note that resources are not meant to be finite, so if you happen to run out, use a suitable replacement. Next, whether you're using cardboard or metal, place the point tokens by the game board, as well as the occupied tokens. Next, we'll choose the forest cards, shuffle them, and depending on the number of players, place cards in the forest clearings. Three for a two player game, four for a three and four player game. Next, let's take the four basic event tiles and we'll place those on the board next to the event sections printed on the game board. Next, shuffle the event cards and place four on the lower branches of the Evertree. Next, shuffle the main deck. Place that in the designated spot in the Evertree. Take eight of those cards and place those face up in the meadow. If you have expansions or the complete collection, you may need to know which cards are base game and which cards are from expansions. On the left hand side of the base game card we see this symbol here. If it's from an expansion, it'll have a second symbol underneath, depending on which expansion it is from. Next, if it hasn't been done already, choose which color to play. Each color comes as a different animal shape. Let's set up a three-player game. Each player will keep for themselves two of their animal figures. The other four they will place on the upper branches of the Evertree. One each for their spring phase, one each for their summer phase, and two each for the autumn phase. And regardless of how many players there are, from the main deck, the first player would receive five cards, the second player six cards, the third player seven cards, and if there were four players, eight cards. The most humble player goes first. So when it is your turn, you are able to place a worker on one of the worker spots, place a card in your tableau of up to 15 cards, or prepare for the next season. But since we don't have any resources yet to pay the cost to play any cards into our tableau, let's learn how to place our workers. First, let's take a look at the two types of worker placement locations. We see we have an exclusive closed off space and a shared open space. An exclusive place is one 
where only one worker can ever be in that space. And, as the name implies, multiple workers can be in the shared space, including from the same player. As for where to place our workers, Everdell gives us several options. To start, we have the basic locations. These are the ones printed on the board along the river. To utilize one, we'll take our worker and place it on that worker spot. We can see that the spot has an assigned resource to it. So when we place our worker in that spot, we will take whatever the sign tells us to and place it in our play area. As for the symbology, we have twigs, resin, stone, and berries for our main resources. Some spots will say to also draw a card, which we will draw from the main draw deck. And we can see this spot here tells us to draw two cards as well as gain a one point token. And we can see on this force location two different symbols, which mean take one of any of the four main resources. To utilize the location, we place our worker on the available worker spot. In a four player game, a second spot is also available, as indicated by this four symbol. Also important to note with forest locations is that although both spaces are open for a four player game, the same player cannot utilize both spaces. It would have to be utilized by a different player. When a worker has been placed on the location, we will then take whatever resources were indicated. There are also the basic and special events. In order to gain a basic event tile, one must meet the special condition as described on the board. In this case, once someone has three traveler cards in their tableau, they could place a worker on the basic event tile and take it for their player space. To gain a special event card, there are also conditions that are printed. In this case, one would need to have a monastery and wanderer in their tableau. To gain a special event card, place the worker on the worker spot and take the card for your personal play area. Sometimes to gain a card, a player needs to accomplish the goal listed at the top of the special event card. Other times, however, a player needs to do that as well as paying any resources that may be required. Also, once you gain an event, it belongs to you permanently, even if you lose what it took to gain the event. Some cards that you build into your city tableau has its own worker space on it. To build one, place it into your tableau as you normally would, which we will get to in a bit. Then to use it, place your worker on the worker spot and follow the instructions underneath. Some cards, however, have an instruction to complete when the card is first played into the city. Once the card has been built and the building instruction complete, the card is now available to use as a worker spot. To use that, place the worker on the worker spot and follow the instructions underneath. So to be clear, the order of operations goes from top to bottom. When you build a card and the top action is a worker spot, then building the card is complete. When building the storehouse, for example, you will see that it has an instruction to do like any other green production card. Complete the action, then the worker spot is open. However, we can see that some cards have an open sign with a one point reminder. What that means is that opponent is able to place one of their workers on that card to receive the effect. Then the player who owned that card would receive one point from the general supply. It costs the opponent nothing to use that spot. As for the locations at the bottom of the game board, first we have the Haven. When you place your worker here, you may discard any number of cards from your hand. And for every two cards that you discarded, you can gain one of any resource. And finally, we come to the spot that is only open in Autumn. Let's say Squirrel wished to utilize this location. He would place his worker on the location, discard the number of cards indicated by the worker spot, and at the end of the game, his worker is worth that amount of points. Note that the journey locations are permanent, meaning that every worker that is there can no longer be used for the remainder of the game. 
If there is an effect that says you can take back a worker, you cannot take back any worker that is in this location. When it's your turn, instead of placing a worker, you can instead play a card. So if you were the first player, you have five cards in your hand to choose from and the eight cards in the meadow, which everyone else also has the ability to build. An important note about hand limit. Our hand limit is at a strict eight cards. So if an action tells us to take cards, but we already have eight, then we simply do not take any cards. If in this instance, we only had seven cards, and this is telling us to draw two cards, we may only draw one card from the main deck. When a card says to reveal, what it means is to do so from the main deck. And you will mostly always draw from the main draw deck unless specified otherwise. Sometimes we must give our opponents cards. In this case, we must choose an opponent who has less than the eight card limit in their hand. You must give as many cards as possible, then discard any remaining. When it comes time to discard a card, create a discard pile. When it comes time for you to draw a card, but there are no cards in the draw pile, take the cards that are in the discard pile, shuffle them together, and place that in the ever tree to form a new draw pile. If you do decide that one of the cards you wish to build is from the meadow, take that card and immediately replace it. If an effect tells you to take more than one card from the meadow, first take all the cards you want from the meadow, then replenish the meadow. And now let's familiarize ourselves with the cards. So we can see each card has a name written in a banner that is the color of the type of card it is, the amount of points it is worth for that player at the end of the game, the card text, which is the effect the card will have for the player, and we can see indicated here by the amount of scratches in this spot here, the amount of cards are in the deck, the required resources to build each card, and on construction cards, which critter may be played for free, and on a critter card, what needs to have already been played to play this card for free, as well as the city limit for the amount of cards you can have in the city. For common construction and critters, you can have as many as you have. For unique critters and constructions, you may only have one of each. That is to say, for example, you may only have one king, and only one castle, and only one dungeon, and only one school in your city. Let's say we've placed our worker a couple of times, and these are the resources that we gathered. And now this is the card we wish to play. We know we are able to play this card because we have two twigs and one resin. To place the card down in our 15 card city, we take the resources required for that card and place those back in the main resource piles. Let's say that these were two cards that we wish to build, either from our hand and or from the meadow. We've already seen what it would take to build the castle, and if we wanted, we could build the critter the same way. Alternatively, we can see at the bottom right of the castle that there is a king picture and word listed. And at the top left of the king, there is a castle listed. This castle listing means that it would need to have a castle in order to play this card for free. And of course, this king means this castle can build the king for free into your city. So if you had these two cards and did not want to pay the berry cost, you can take an occupied token and place that on the castle card. This is a reminder that this castle has already placed a king into this city. And if at some point one or the other card were removed from the city, the occupied token would remain for a critter removal, and the critter would remain for a construction removal. Note that some cards explicitly state may not be used with any other card playing ability. So in this example here, where we have two cards with unrestricted effects and one card with a restrictive effect, if we were to, in this example, place a construction in this city, we would need to decide if we wanted to do the unrestricted effects or the one restricted effect. 
Now let's go over our different card color types. We have our Tan Traveler. When a Tan Traveler card is played into your tableau, it activates once immediately when played and never activates again. Then we have our Green Production. The Green Production cards activate once immediately when played and once during Spring's Prepare for Season, as well as Autumn's Prepare for Season. Next is the Red Destination cards. The Red Destination cards activate when a worker is placed on it. Cards with an open symbol on it may be visited by opponents. Then there's the Blue Governance cards. Blue Governance offers different ways to play cards for a discount or grants bonuses after playing certain card types. A card's bonus is not earned for playing itself. And finally, Purple Prosperity. Purple Prosperity cards are worth both the base points and the listed bonus points at the end of the game if the effect was achieved. So as we heard earlier, your tableau, which is made above the cards placed in front of you, can only have up to 15 cards. Let's now just go through some clarifications. We can see that if we built an inn into our tableau, if we placed a worker on that spot, we can play a critter or construction from the meadow for three fewer resources. The exception to this is, of course, if your city already has 15 cards, then this action is not one you are able to take. We see here various options for couples. On the card it says, may share a space with a gatherer, or alternative similar text. So although you may only have 15 spaces in your city, the couple can occupy the same space. Also, if you wish to play a card into your city, and its effect is to remove another card from your city, that card is removed immediately before that card is played, ensuring you never go over the 15 card limit. But what if those cards have a worker on it? We can see on this card on the right, it says worker stays here permanently. In this case, the worker is lost with the card. However, if the card has a non-permanent worker, leave the worker on the card until the worker returns when its owner prepares for season. And at some point, you may gain a basic or special event. If you do so, this does not count towards the 15 card total. When playing a fool into a city, it triggers no effects. Also, any point tokens and resources played on a card are exclusive to the actions of that card. And any point tokens left on the card at the end of the game is added to your final score. At game start, we are already in winter. Let's say you have all your workers deployed and you've built the cards into your city that you are able or want to. You can prepare for season, taking back any workers you have deployed and in later rounds that will include from basic and special events, any placement worker spots in yours or an opponent's city, and the haven. Take the amount of workers as indicated by the next season you personally are entering into, as well as resolve the action indicated as part of that season. In the case of spring and autumn, activate all green production cards in your city, in any order you choose. Then continue placing your workers and building more cards into your city until next prepare for season. And in summer, you may draw two cards from the meadow if your hand limit allows you to. Then continue on after that until you've reached the end of the game. And note, not everyone needs to be in the same season at the same time. So now you're in the autumn round, all your workers have been deployed, and you cannot or don't wish to perform any more actions. At that time, you pass on your turn. When you pass, you cannot be given any cards or resources. Your workers remain on all the spots they were deployed to in your city and on the game board, and can still receive a point token for other critters visiting your city. If there is only one player left who has not passed, and any cards or resources need to be given to a player, they must discard those cards and resources instead. Any players who have not yet passed continue playing as normal until they hit the point where they must pass. Then add up all the points. 
Start by adding up the point value of each card. Each point total is found in the mid right part of the card. Also, purple prosperity cards have bonus points that get awarded to you right now if the condition was met. Points from events get added to your score, as well as any point tokens you may have, including those that may be left on certain cards in your city. Finally, be sure to add the points gained from the journey spot. If, after totaling your score, there is a tie, the player who achieved the most events wins. But if there's still a tie, the player with the most resources wins. And as with any game of this nature, be sure you're reading the cards as they come out, so you don't miss a thing. And that's all you need to know to get started playing Everdell. So join me next time as I do a playthrough.